Before we get onto all the good stuff like signing the user in, updating our navigation bar, and implementing stuff like changing the user's password, we need to first think about cross-site request forgery protection and how we're going to implement it into our forms to make sure we're protected. Now, I'm not going to go over cross-site request forgery protection. We have a security series that completely covers this. So go ahead and check that out if you're not too sure. But now all we're really concerned about is getting this into our form. So if we just head over to our sign up form, at the moment, we don't have any cross-site request forgery protection on here. And in a nutshell, all this is is a token that's submitted along with your form just to make sure the person that's currently viewing the page is actually signing up or rather is actually submitting this form. So it's really important that we do this and it's very easy to do with Slim. Now we're going to be using the official cross-site request forgery middleware for this, but we're going to be creating some additional middleware just to make this package a little bit easier to use. If we were to build this cross-site request forgery protection ourselves, it would take a lot of effort. You can see here that the middleware for this is pretty extensive. So you can go ahead and browse this at your leisure. Either way, we want to get this into our project and set it up so we can very easily implement it into our forms. So let's start by just installing this. We know that the package name is slim cross-site request forgery. So again, if we just open up our terminal and require this in with Composer, and wait for this to download. Great, so now that that has downloaded, we can go and implement this and just take a look at how this normally works. So the first thing we want to do is just pull this into here. So to add this as middleware, all we do is say just the normal way that we would add middleware so app add and then what we want to do is use slim cross-site request forgery guard but i'm actually going to attach this to my container so let's go up here and just attach it in so cross-site request forgery and create our closure put in our container there and we'll just return a new slim cross-site request forgery guard simple as that so this is the traditional way we would do it and then we would use that within our roots or our controllers but we're going to take things a little step further and we'll cover that in the next video we'll look at how we use this first of all so we just want to add container cross-site request forgery so we now have our cross-site request forgery protection turned on so let's take a look at submitting this form and see how this works. Now we get failed cross-site request forgery check. The reason being is that we haven't placed the data that we need, e.g. the token name and the token value into our form. And this is generated for every session and it just means that whoever's on this page is actually submitting it. It's not being done from anywhere else. Okay, so how do we actually use this? Well, traditionally, what we would do is in our controller, so we can test this out in our controller, let's just do this up here. And we can head over to the documentation to find out how we actually use this. You can see here that we attach it to our container. We've already done that. And then here we use this cross-site request forgery get token name key and get token value key. And this is pretty much all we need to do. So let's just test this out so let's just pull this into our project and let's do a var dump on this so this isn't what we're going to actually end up doing but we can actually see how this works so let's go and just refresh our page and you can see we get cross-site request forgery name that's the name of our first hidden input now we also have get token value key so that's cross-site request forgery value and then what we can do is we can use request get attribute and then get that from the name and the value key. So we can just test this out as well, just to make sure everything's working. Just pop that in here. And in here, we know that it's something like get a cross site request forgery value. And of course this needs to be request because that's what we've called that. So this will just be our randomly generated token that is matched when we hit this button obviously at the moment is failing so hopefully that makes sense now that we've got this installed 
we can go over to the next part and actually set up our middleware that will pass this through to our view. And we're going to do this in a really convenient way. We'll see how we do that next.